on college campuses, the odds are really stacked against like male students. These women are the majority of students. I basically kind of like went through all the like female only programs and like scholarships and departments that USC offers. I basically just compiled a list and I filed a federal complaint. Gems, girls in engineering, math, and science as a summer camp for middle school girls only. I just saw that as just blatant discrimination against middle school boys, and so I filed a complaint. You cannot ignore how we got here, because if you do, we'll probably end up back there. In the last year, the Department of Education has opened several investigations into American universities after complaints that those universities are systematically discriminating against male students. The argument is essentially that by funding women's only scholarships and programs, universities are discriminating against men. When did you start feeling that you, as a man, were being discriminated against at USC. I, I guess like it's really incomprehensible to me that like with men being the minority that all these like female on the scholarships are still like going on in those like colleges. Three of the government's ongoing investigations were triggered by complaints from this one man. And actually, if you come to think of it, affirmative action for women is much more comprehensive than affirmative action on the basis of race. Kersat's main arguments are with one, women's scholarships, Women's studies, that's the second item. Women's centers, that's the third item. Psychologists do not have men's centers. And lastly, professional groups, like women in business or women in science and engineering. So he filed a complaint with the Department of Education, arguing that by funding women's scholarships and clubs, the University of Southern California was violating Title IX, a federal provision that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. The Department of Education has received complaints like this before against other universities and dismissed them. This time, though, the administration opened an investigation in USC. Colleges do not offer similar affirmative action programs for men in the disciplines in which they are the minority. So women are the like, absolute majority in, for example, like social work. It sounds like you're describing a zero-sum game. You think that feminists have advanced the cause of women at the expense of men. Um, I think for the most part, yes. The University of Southern California is engaging in gender discrimination against men by offering... Kersat wrote three of the four Title IX complaints that have resulted in these Department of Education investigations, and he's helped to draft three more that are still being reviewed. I wanted to meet him because the Department of Education is taking his complaint seriously, and because a single English literature doctoral student has found a way to use Title IX in ways it was never intended to be used, to argue against the legitimacy of women-only programs. I needed some context around these cases, so I went to the National Women's Law Center in Washington, D.C. to meet its education expert. It is concerning that the Department of Education is investigating these complaints rather than just dismissing them outright in uh, states where affirmative action bans have been implemented for race-conscious admissions. We've actually seen enrollment for people of color drop. We're really concerned that doing away with gender-inclusive programs, you would see the same thing for women across the board. Back in the late 1940s, women were less than 30% of postgraduate students. Title IX was signed into being in 1972 by President Nixon. The idea was to mandate equal treatment and protect women from being held back by gender stereotypes. But by 1981, women were earning more bachelor's degrees than men were, and they have every year since. That's now at every degree level, by the way. In 2016, women earned around 53% of PhDs. That said, women are still underrepresented in high-growth science and technology fields. They're just 20% of computer programmers and engineers. And they make less money after graduating college. While affirmative action has helped women overall, not all women have seen the gains from affirmative action. So women of color, particularly black and Latina women, are still underrepresented in college. Should we be worried that women are the majority on undergraduate campuses? Does that indicate that men might be struggling um, in some sort of systemic way to access college? Um, I think it's a good thing that, you know, campuses are becoming more diverse. We're in a global economy and you need to learn from people from different walks of life. Kersat has continued to file Title IX complaints against schools he does not attend and has nothing to do with, something that I was surprised to learn Title IX procedure allows. Why did you choose Yale and Princeton? You don't go to those schools? Yes, um, I initially thought of like filing a complaint against Harvard because I think that's kind of like an iconic move, like people who challenge affirmative action just go after Harvard. But I, know, I felt like Yale has more female on the program. 
But why is it your business to file Title IX complaints against Yale and Princeton at all? You don't go there. Why, why not, not let Why not let students there decide how they want their campus to operate? You know, I guess like mainly kind of like to inspire others, I guess. In the last year, Kurzat has become a kind of figurehead for this activism. He even created a guide. He calls it How to Abolish Affirmative Action for Women and put it on the internet. Um, I've been in extensive correspondence with like some people who want to file similar complaints. I just want to say first, I'm so proud to be one of your students and second, please excuse the informality, you're the man. <laughs> but if he is a figurehead, he's an imperfect one. Kursat is affiliated with a men's rights group called the National Coalition for Men, and he helped the group file three Title IX complaints. The Coalition for Men is concerned about women's scholarships and programming, sure, but it also accuses feminists of conspiring to hurt men and boys. Presented by the National Coalition for Men. If you're a man attending college, you've probably noticed a lot of focus on your campus about the issues of women. There are women's and gender studies programs. And that another appear. thing, in 2015, a female student filed a Title IX complaint against Kursat, alleging that after a short romantic relationship, he harassed and stalked her. Do, 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 like, do I want to discuss that? Ideally, no. According to Department of Education documents, Kurset filed two counter complaints, also with the university's Title IX office. But USC decided in the woman's favor and ordered him to seek counseling. Kurset disputes the allegations and the university's findings. To what extent did the Title IX complaint against you motivate your future Title IX complaints? I'm not sure. I think I would have filed something about scholarships, probably, because I started writing that draft a long time ago. Hey, Kursat? Hey, it's Mark Perry calling, and I just want to... Do you have just a couple minutes? This is Mark Perry. He's not affiliated with the National Coalition for Men, but he speaks with Kursat on occasion about his own Title IX complaints, which he's filing not at the federal level, but with university Title IX offices across the country. It's kind of a part-time job for me. The first issue that I became aware of and got interested in is that about 45 miles away from here in Lansing, Michigan, at Michigan State, they had a all-women or women-only study lounge, gender apartheid, as I called it. So then I filed a civil rights complaint. As the case was proceeding, Michigan State opened up the lounge to all genders, though administrators said they made this decision before Mark got involved, after receiving complaints not just from male students, but from the transgender community. Because if it's a women only, then it wasn't clear if you're transgender or gender non-binary or gender fluid or gender non-conforming. Um, it wasn't clear if they were allowed into a women's only lounge. But these days, Mark has a new target for his new barrage of complaints, science and computer camps for young girls. Here's a uh, high school uh, or a women's and technology program that is for female high school students only. Already, he's seen what he would call victories. Last year, the University of Michigan Flint opened its girls' math and engineering camp to boys. And after receiving another one of Mark's complaints, the University of Minnesota quietly opened up two women's only scholarships to men. But critics, and there are many, say these men's rights activists have profoundly misunderstood Title IX. The Department of Education's regulations specifically allow for affirmative action programs. The idea is that the numbers don't tell the whole story. Men may be underrepresented in certain fields, like social work or nursing, but not because of the same institutional discrimination that held women back for decades and that today's regulations are designed to correct for. Men are often underrepresented for different reasons, often social ones. For example, teaching. You know, there should definitely be men, more men, black men especially, um, in the teaching field. I think if you really wanted to have a conversation about getting men in fields where they're underrepresented, I'd be open to that conversation, but that's not what we're hearing. But instead of hearing good faith ideas about how to help men and boys, she's just hearing calls to take programs away from women. How the Department of Education responds to these complaints could send a signal to universities across the country and might push them to reevaluate their own women's programs. In a statement to NBC News, the Department of Education Press Secretary Liz Hill said that the office is committed to neutrally and impartially assessing individual claims on their merits. So I wonder, is it the time now to be reevaluating women's only scholarships, programs, um, and policies? There might be a time, but we're not there yet. In fact, like, we may eventually have to discuss implementing affirmative action for men in colleges because like, that imbalance is not going to disappear anytime soon. Thank <laughs> you.